what's going on guys out here in the bait room what's this what is this monstrosity I'm going to attempt to make a spider got some old Senkos clip them down started out sitting there drawing through this guy cut it out it a little small, redrew it just a little bigger. Now I'm going to put this in there. I'm going to cut it out and proceed. Let's make this guy. I think what I'm going to do here, I'm going to put little springs, four springs on each side for each legs, and I'm going to put little pieces of wire inside the Senkos to make them bend uh, like this. I mean, so they'll be hooked on, but they'll look like this. If you can imagine. These ones will be like this. These are the front ones. It's cutting this out. I just got to attach that on there. Cut it out. And get to this. The lighting is not so great out here in my bait room. I got to get some new uh, light bulbs. Let's cut this out. Get going. Got Loctite super glue and I put a little bit on a piece of wood, stuck that on there, ready to go. Next step. step all right guys so the next step here on this thing is I took a pencil and I kind of drew round on the head and around that a little up on the bottom the back there so now I'm gonna cut this guy out Not bad. Kind of like it. Just need to take uh, my knife now. What I'll do here. Let's go. Come back with my trusty old knife. Make sure I got a nice clean blade in there. You gotta be careful with these. I uh, cut myself all the time with them. I just come back. And what you do is draw what's called chamfer lines. You get the pencil set in your finger the same size, it will be the exact same size all the way around. Side. Let's see if it's 
exactly perfect. So I'll have to go back and fix a little bit. This guy's a little bit off on this side. I think I'll cut that out right now. But you get the idea. Go along, you make your lines. You take your knife. Actually, I can do them on this side too. So everything starts off with squares and rounds. And then on these cuts, it's all 45 cuts. So you're going to be cutting at an angle to cut all this off. Take your knife, and just come back along this. This wood. This is just a little piece of wood I found in the bait room. You see that? You just carve until your knife blade hits both sides of the line. You have a 45 degree angle. It's really just that simple. that grain. Just want to work the wood the way that it works the easiest. Don't force yourself. If you got a spot like that where it wants to go against the grain, just cut it from the inside. Carve it from the inside. Yep. So anyways, you just go back along and you kind of chisel down anything that's squared. to hit those grooves. Anyways, so I'll continue doing that and I'll show you guys what it looks like at the end. Alright, so we get it to this point here. Next step you need to sand it with some sanding paper. Take this and go around this guy. And just kind of smooth out. I'm gonna smooth out all the little bumps in there. Make it like that. So I was just continue to round this all off with the sandpaper. I was going to use the Dremel, but I feel if I use the Dremel, I'm going to take off too much wood. I don't want to take off too much wood. Can I take off too much wood? <laughs> I guess that's simple. <laughs> Anyways, so I'm going to finish sanding this. Next step will be to take, well, not quite yet. Next step after that will be to bit probably drill a bunch of holes on this guy and then I might do a line through harness on this I don't know I'll see what I'm gonna do all right guys so we got her sanded down and we got one little imperfection where I made my relief cut right there so what I'm gonna do with that guy is the good old baking soda trick super glue. So we'll do that real quick. Just get it in that crack. Come back with the super glue. Oops. 
that one. It needs to be cut back open. That, as soon as that hits, drags on there. I'm gonna wipe off that a little bit there. Fills in that hole perfect. And on to the next step. Alright, so the next step on this guy is going to be going around. I put the Senko worms here and I got them set up exactly where I want them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around with the pencil and I'm going to kind of mark this guy where every in between is on the Senkos. Kind of got some marks there. <clears throat> now what I'll be able to do is determine exactly how I want these to be on there. I think I want them up at an angle like this. That way they'll naturally hang down. I think that's the way I'm going to do it. So what I got to do is I got to make some eye holes for this part. And this part, I was going to do a line through, but I'm just going to do it like this because of the shape of this. I'm going to put a line line tie in the front, hook hanger on the bottom, and then I'm going to put springs. I'm going to drill holes in between where each one of these Senkos would go. go. So I've got to find the dead center of each one of these. Once I find out where I want to put the springs up here, I kind of want to have them up a little bit higher like this than dead center. That way those worms are up because I'm going to put the springs at an angle coming out. It's going to be kind of tough, but I think I can do it. Going back in between each one. Basically kind of marking a little spot. that. Take this little hole punch deal or uh, it's for scribing uh, glass and like cutting glass and stuff. I know the lighting is not the best in here but I just make these little holes in there like that and that'll give the drill bit a spot to go in. Once I put the drill bit on and I drill these holes out. Repeat the other side the same way, and I'll do the nose, and then I'll make some line ties, and I'll cut the springs down, drill the holes, show you guys all that. All right, guys. So some of you guys know uh, Richard from our channel, Urban Bachelors here. Uh, he moved back to uh, North Carolina. It's been about a month, month and a half since he moved. It really sucks. It's kind of not the same without him around. I uh, still talk to him on the phone and stuff. He's out there catching fish. He got to go out on a boat. I went to the lakes out there and he caught like a four and a half, five pounder. I want to get him to start getting me some pictures and some footage and stuff from out in North Carolina. Anyways, he left this guy for me. So my old way of making the uh, line ties and stuff was I would just twist them. But this guy is so simple. Um, he left this for me. This is for actually making the spinner baits. Uh, got a whole bunch of them that he made and he handmade all these with this guy here this thing is really handy I just took two screws and I just screw it to my bench uh, to use it real quick I just use my little DeWalt screw it on the bench it's on there it's ready to go um, when I'm not using it I throw it down there in the box with all the spinner bait stuff I got so much bait making stuff in this room so anyways what we're gonna do here I got this wire it's a spinnerbait wire. We're just going to clip off. Let's see a piece about that. A piece about that long. Uh, let's see. You know, where's my box? Uh, take this box. Just right here so you guys can see. Uh, how are we going to do 
this here. So take this guy, and put it on the bottom. It's been a minute since I used this, so let me get this right here, guys. Take that guy, put it this way. Nope, nope. Got that one wrong there. Let's try that again. You're supposed to get it like that. Then you take it, pinch one side, like that, flip it, pinch the other side down, until it's about like that. And then what I do is I open it back up, take this guy up here, hook it on here. Alright, let me get the box set back up so you guys can see this. Yes, yes, I am very disorganized. So this guy pops in there. And you push this all the way forward. Pull this thing as tight as you can. And you're just gonna push that down. Oops. And push that down. And just simply crank this guy. Oh, one of the sides popped out. One of sides popped out on me. Something told me that whole one was just, it wasn't going to work. So, that one's kind of a failure. Let's try to make another one. Now, on that last one, I didn't hold this down tight enough. And one side of this popped out of there. And you see how it only wrapped around the half like that? Let's see if I can get this one a little better here. I think I've done really tight. have to be perfect it's just gonna be a little line tie for the bottom of the bait take this Oops. pick that up off the floor so you don't step on it hurt yourself kind of clip that guy off too and that will go in the bottom of the bait and it's just long enough to where it won't go through so that guy will be right there for the line tie. I'll make one more for the nose. And we'll move on to doing the springs. So the next step, is I've taken my drill, found a bit that was about the size of this, and I put it to the depth of the eye hole. Now I'm just going to drill this guy out. Simple. Pretty easy. You know I don't like that guy. I'm gonna remake that one. This guy's gonna go right where it belongs. In the garbage. Not everything is first first try around here. I put that thing up, just pull it right back out. I'm gonna make a new one. I don't like that one. Perfectionist. Alright, guys, I got these holes drilled. Next step is gonna be taking the super glue again. Make sure the tip is open. Okay, I'm gonna be taking the super glue here. Get a nice dab in there. This guy and just coat it a little bit. Stick that in there. You know what I like to do when it's not flush like that? 
take it right here. Just push it in that wood a little bit. And it sets it down in there a little bit. If it's not set right, you take some pliers. That. that guy's in. I'm gonna do the front, same thing. Super glue down in the front. And this one that's a little bit longer. I remade that one. The other one was garbage. So I'll use that and poke it in there and make sure that glues all the way down in there. If any of the excess runs out like that, just let it run out. Do the same thing here. Push that nose all the way in. It's all the way in. Now come back with these. Straighten that guy out. Make sure it's nice and straight. Close enough for me. Then just pull that stuff down like that. I'm going to have to come back and glue this whole thing anyways to seal the bait so it doesn't matter if it runs down right now. You just don't want it clumping up in areas so I got that at that point now. Now my next thing will be to get the springs and attach the springs to this guy. It's a long time ago I went to a Home Depot, bought a whole bunch of springs. They come in a pack. It was only a couple dollars for all these. So I got a bunch that are about the same size and I'm just going to cut these guys up. And I'm going to stick the springs in here and basically it's going to be like this guy this is the old school way I did it and you can just screw that plastic on there like that pretty cool alright so the next step here I'm going to take a bunch of this Loctite, pour it down in the holes, and I'm just going to take the springs that I cut off, stick the springs in their spots, each one gets its own spring. Just get it nice and snug down in there. If they stick out too far, you can clip them off, and try to get them all. cut about exactly the same size so that way when I go to do this there all about the same size that one might be a little bit long same with that one I'll let them dry I'll throw some more Loctite in there I'll let that side dry I'll flip it over I'll do the same thing to the other side so I went ahead and I threw some of the uh, baking soda in there I just filled up the holes all the way with the super glue and put some baking soda in there and fill it up and I'll go back and I'll shape it out you can see there's a little spot right here where it didn't quite get down in there just throw some super glue in there little tiny bit of baking soda I mean like the smallest bit will work as soon as it touches it it's instantly hard so that's one side of it Right, everyone. Here we go. So what I did was I just took some white Rust-Oleum gloss enamel. It's just the uh, the gloss. All I had, really. I just like to use the spray paint sometimes as a base coat because it's really thick. Uh, it's a lot easier to do than doing the airbrush paint. So I just threw a quick coat on there. I'll go back now with a little bit of sandpaper. And I'll just hit up some of the spots that are a little bit rough. And also what it does, when you hit it with the paint, you can see the little imperfection spots in the bait, like right here. I can go back and I can fill that in or sand that out and I can make sure it's all nice and flat and even. That's the best, best thing with the base coat. You got these little chunkies on the head here. And just go along. Sand that down just a little bit. 
then I'll go back and I'll hit this again with a really light coat of white and I'll let it drag in I got those guys all hooked in there looking pretty cool so far you get it hooked up with some paint get it all cleaned up little imperfections like that got to go away and then I will paint this guy I think I'm gonna airbrush it yep I think I'm gonna airbrush it anyways for best letters so what I did was I sanded a little bit hit it with some more white got it a little cleaner I now have airbrush colors in my airbrush ready to go and I'm gonna airbrush this thing <laughs> it's kind of funny so I did is I just took some old robo worms and threw them on there to see what the robo worms would look like oh, it's pretty cool I'll get some robo worms and it's on there Looks like it's going to have some good action. Pretty cool. Let's see what it looks like putting the uh, regular Cinco's on there. Looks pretty cool. It's a little heavier, actually a lot heavier than using the robo worms, so still cool looking though. Now these guys don't really sit the way I want to, so what I might do is put some little like pieces of wire in here to hold these legs out and make them bend the way they're supposed to. I've thought about molding the worms to where I would take the worm and put a piece of metal in it or something and bend it and then mold it at that angle so it would be like this and it would be bent I don't know I might do it I might not I think it's a little overkill it looks cool next step is just going to be to paint that guy in 220 epoxy and take it out and see how it works for the best layers thanks for watching guys because so I like to use something like this old paintbrush I'm gonna use it and make it look like there's fur on the back of this guy or whatever you want to call it on a spider. Little hairs on the spider. Should look pretty cool when I'm done. Anyways, I'm gonna get at it. And I'm gonna have to make some eyeballs, some kind of spider eyes. That should be fun too. Pretty simple. Just heat setting the paint.
too bad. Just black and brown. I don't, I don't know. Almost looks good enough to just leave it. I think I might. I don't want to ruin it. I think that looks really good. We're just going to move on to the next step. Leave it as it is. Something I learned a long time ago one of my friends when we used to paint when we were kids. He always told me, if you do something in painting and like you're doing something and it looks like it's wrong or like the technique you use is kind of weird, but it works, is what he used to say is if it's not broke, don't fix it. So this doesn't look broken. It looks perfect. If I touch it or if I try to do something else to it, probably going to mess it up. So I try to throw another color on top of this probably going to mess it up, so I'm just going to leave it. Onto the next fun step here, make some eyeballs. So I drew a couple circles. I mixed a little bit of this dragonfly glaze <clears throat> and green glitter here. And I just made some little circles. Put some on there. And like all the eyeballs I make, I like to do this with them. Flip them upside down. And it helps them keep rounded until it's dry. It takes quite a while to do it sometimes. Sometimes I'll just set it here and put something on top. And let it sit and then I'll flip it, flip it. <clears throat> Next thing after this, once these are dry, I will take some two tiny epoxy and I'll make them a little bit bigger, pop them out a little higher. And those guys will go on here. Next step. I took a little tiny, tiny bit of black flake. Step. Just flip it upside down. Wait for it to cure. Alright, guys, it's really late. Out the bait room. Got my two tiny epoxy. Got the bait here. I'm not going to bore you guys with this process. I'm going to two tiny epoxy this guy. It's really dark out here. The lighting's probably garbage. Just using these uh, plastic bristle brushes. Cut them in half. I cut this guy in half. I use the back end of this one to mix the epoxy. I'm gonna use one of these guys. Put it on there. All right, guys. <laughs> I got the funky, funky contraption spider. Let's see if we can. Uh, cast this thing out here see how it ruins it's tangled somewhere here you tell yep now when we were in the car we saw a bunch of bass busting out here I might get lucky on this guy but I doubt it Yeah, it definitely works top water like I wanted. Ooh, big bass right there. Did that actually crawl as I was running it in?
<laughs> Doesn't look exactly real, but it looks pretty cool. Just for a little uh, one day build, as Marling Bates would say, it's not a one day build and cast a catch, but uh, it's a one day. Really deep right there. Try to walk across that. That's pretty deep. Just need one fish to be interested in this thing, man. It's all over with. As heavy as this thing is, I thought this thing would sink. That's pretty cool, man. That thing actually floats. Wow. Okay. I'm gonna try something here. Cast it out here. I'm just gonna let it sit. Water warmed back up for sure. All right. Let's check it out, guys. Here she is guys, all finished up. Got a couple casts with it, it floats. I might put some wires in the uh, appendages to make them stick the way they're supposed to look uh, with the points more like this, you know? So it's more like a spider. Look more like that, you know? Pretty cool though. I like those eyeballs, those eyeballs came out really cool. Didn't have any fish go at it, just cast it a couple of times. I wanted to see what it looked like. I'm gonna get some uh, shots of it for Instagram and then we're gonna go smashing bass. They're jumping. Ooh, that hook is sharp.